Welcome to United with Christ, where a miracle is on the way to you. I am Pastor Orlando. Today we're ministering on the gifts of the Spirit. Get ready. Do not go. The show starts now. United with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation of Life Christian Broadcasting Television. And now, United with Christ. I am so glad you're tuning in. Listen, do not wait till the end. Call 915-532-8180 as we're going to be praying for the miracle that you're asking the Lord. I feel that somebody is going through something in your life and it has to do maybe with your marriage, relationships. I want to pray for that today. I'm also, of course, going to be teaching on the gifts of the Spirit, and I would like to pray that God is going to empower you show you what is his will for you. And you better get a pen, get a pencil, get a note, start your devices, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 as we continue this series on the gifts of the Spirit. And then I'm going to pray for you for that need that you have. There's somebody, look, the gifts are just flowing. There's somebody who has a an issue with your uh, a job related. We're going to pray that the Lord will open doors for you in that area. Um, I pray for healing in the name of Jesus. Those of you who are sick, do not wait. You don't have to wait for the um, uh, end of the program to call the number on your screen and let us know how we can pray for you. So let's go and do it right now. Just call us and we'll be ministering prayer in the name of Jesus for your life. First Corinthians chapter 12, the Bible declares that it is not God's will that you do not know what your gifts are. I'm going to read it for you. First Corinthians 12, 1. Concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, the apostle Paul says, I do not want you to be ignorant or unaware. The Church of the Corinthians, uh, it was a church that w did not lack gifts. In, fa in fact, if you read chapter 1, which we did last time, and by the way, make sure that you do watch the programs before this one. Two of them, the last couple of weeks, we have been teaching on the gifts. And this was a very gifted church which lacked love. But as Paul teaches to the church about love in chapter 13 and then prophecy in chapter 14, he's saying to them in chapter 12, don't get me wrong. I don't want you to be ignorant of the, of the gifts that you have. And we're going to mention those here. Because when you are ignorant of the gifts, he says, you can be deceived. Because, think about it, the word of knowledge, the sermon of spirits, and the word of wisdom, for example, uh, gifts that, that Paul mentions in this chapter are important for you to discern and to be aware of deceptive spirits and people in your life that will just literally drain the anointing out of you. So Paul is saying, when you do not know who you are, how empowered you are, and if you don't know the spiritual things having to do with how God has empowered you and the abilities and capacities and gifts the Lord has given you, you will be deceived. But there's something else here that the body of Christ, when, the, when people in the body of Christ do not understand their giftings, they contribute to the split of the church. It's right here. I'm going to show it to you in just a moment. Then Paul continues to say, by the way, the word gifts in, in verse 1 of chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians, that word is pneumaticon in Greek, which pneuma is spirit. So Paul is saying, don't be, um, don't be ignorant of the things having to do with the spirit. Spiritual things are important. Then, if you go with me to verse chapter 4, Paul says, here they are. There are different gifts in English, but the word there is charismaton in Greek, which, which means the graces, and he says, but those are given by the Spirit. Let me read it to you. There are different charismaton or graces, but the same Spirit, referring to 
the Holy Spirit. Therefore, you cannot be ignorant of what are the graces given to you by the Holy Spirit. In verse 5, he says there are different ministries. The Greek word there is diaconion. Diaconion refers to ministries. And he says, but the same Lord. Therefore, there are the graces of the Holy Spirit. Do you know what they are? And then Paul says that there are the ministries of the Lord. Do you know which, which ministries the Lord is giving to you? You are to know. And then in verse 6, he says, and there are different activities. And the word there is energematon, energia, or energia, or ener ener en energema means energies or uh, empowerment. Power, uh, think about dynamis, dynamite energies, or what, what the English translator says here in this version, activities, but the same God. And Paul refers here to the Father because Paul always calls the Father the God and Father of Jesus Christ. What I want you to see here is that, number one, you cannot be... It's not good for you and it's not healthy for any church or member of the body of Christ to not know what are the graces of the Spirit, what are the ministries of the Lord, and what are the activities that the Father is giving. Think about it. There are gifts. We're going to call them all gifts because it means that you do not earn them. They are already inside of you if the Holy Spirit dwells in you. If you have received Jesus as your Savior, there are graces, uh, ministries, and activities given to you. And the Bible says, if you're ignorant of these graces, uh, ministries, and activities given by the Spirit, the Son, and the Father, then you are in danger of dying spiritually. You are contributing to the splitting of the church, and that is not good for you because... Uh, look what Paul says in verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit, this is another Greek word. Um, the Greek word here is panerosis. Are you, are you hearing? There are graces, ministries, activities, and manifestations that you need to be aware of. Four things that God wants you to know. This is such a big tragedy in the church because people have gotten away from the uh, power of the Holy Spirit into just love. But look how the, where the church is going today. Uh, and Paul says, it is not good for the church not to be a loving church, but at the same time, a gifted church that is manifesting what God is giving to them. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit have given you gifts that you need to discover. And I like this because most people in the church today think that there are only nine gifts of the Spirit, but these nine things that we call gifts are manifestations. They do not include the graces of the Spirit, the, uh, the ministries of the Lord, and the energemas or the activities of the Father. Those are given in verse 4, 5, and 6. In verse 7, however, Paul begins to speak about the panerosis or the manifestations of the Spirit. And here they are. They are nine, but those are not included in the, in the three operations of the Son, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit mentioned in verses 4, 5, and 6. So verse 7 gives us the nine uh, items that we call gifts of the Spirit in the church today. Uh, and here is... Uh, what it says, the manifestation of the Spirit, not the graces, not the ministries, and not the activities. The manifestations of the Spirit uh, is given to each person. Wait, at least you need to know these nine, and you need to know that you are already empowered with these manifestations inside of you. Look what it says. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each person for the common good or for the profit of all. To one is given a message of wisdom through the Spirit. To another, a message, uh, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing, gifts, plural, of healing by, the, by, the, by one and the same Spirit. To another, the performing of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the, uh, discerning of spirits. To another, 
different kinds of tongues, different kinds of tongues. There are three that we register in the Bible. There is a tongue that you speak and somebody understands because you're speaking in the language that they have. There is a tongue that is your personal prayer language that you speak to God in mysteries. And there is also the tongue that the church interprets for the edification of the church and prophecy. That one needs interpretation. And Paul says there are different kinds of tongues to another interpretation of tongues. One and the same spirit give all of this manifestation distributing to all as he wills. But Paul says that the manifestation of the spirit is for the profit of the one that provides it and the one that receives it. Therefore, when you are not functioning on these nine panerosis or manifestations of the spirits, you're losing. It says that it's for your profit, spiritually speaking, and for mine, if I'm receiving that manifestation from you. Think about it. If I pray for somebody today and that person become healed, that is a profit to that person. But the Bible says that I profit myself because the power is, is flowing through me. And the Bible says that the, uh, the worker is worthy of his salary. I'm not talking about finances here. I'm talking about spiritual blessings. If you let the Holy Spirit use you for his glory, but if you don't know these things, then you don't, you don't, you don't know how to use them. Now, <clears throat> Just to make sure you understand, and again, I want you to call the prayer line. 915-532-8518 is open. Let us know how we can pray for you, and I'll be praying for you in just a few minutes. But let me go back to, uh, to review this, just so that you know. The nine manifestations of the Spirit mentioned in 1 Corinthians 12, 7 and on are not the graces of the Spirit mentioned in verse 4 and are not the gifts of the Son of God mentioned in verse 5 and are not the activities of the Father mentioned in verse 6. In verse 7, nine manifestations are not included in what the Lord provides and the Son provides and God the Father provides and what the Spirit provides on a separate, uh, on a separate line as we have read. So go back and read these verses Ask the Lord to give you wisdom and then do what Paul says at the end of the chapter. Chapter 12, he says, desire the greater gifts. And then he's going to talk about love. But he never said that love replaces the gifts. Because in chapter 14, he tells the church they need to have the three. He says in, verse, in chapter 14, one, pursue love, that is Chapter 13, desire spiritual gifts, that is chapter 12, and then especially that you may prophesy, and that is his emphasis on chapter 14. I'm feeling the anointing, I don't know, but this is a great teaching. Listen, the church is losing. Attendance in the church in the United States is going down. Among Christians who go to church, over 50% of them are not reading the Bible. That's why they're a powerless Christian. You need to stop not reading the Bible. That is the word of God. When in the U.S., 90% of the people used to be people who pray. 90% of the population uh, used to pray. 60 million people used to go to church. Now you have 34%. In the English community and Hispanics, which I speak Spanish, are even lower, down to 18%. And of those who go to church, reading the Bible, praying, becoming volunteers to help because there is no motivation, there is no power. You cannot grow spiritually, just go and sit down and you do nothing. Look, let's get away from that. Let's go back. The time is very dangerous for Christians not to be spiritually on fire. Come on, I love you, you love me, like Barney songs, but come on, I got to deliver to you the gifts of the Spirit so that you are motivated and edified and built, and then you need to discover your gifts. Amen? Now listen, let me give you a picture that I, I know that you need to understand. Here is what happens. <clears throat> we know now that there are nine manifestations of the Spirit that we call the nine gifts, but that's not all. Where... Does the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit places the graces, the activities, and the ministries? Remember, I told you that the Father gives us activities or 
energemas or energías or energy empowerment, I told you that's 1 Corinthians 12, 6. I told you also that the Son also has gifts called ministries. Ephesians chapter 4 is very clear. Evangelists, apostles, and teachers, and prophets, and, 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 and pastors are gifts that the Lord gives. But then I also told you that 1 Corinthians 12, 4 speaks about graces or charismas of the Holy Spirit. Where are they? Because we only talk about the nine beginning in verse 7. Well, here's what people don't understand is that every, you, you, have three, you have three places. I call it the three places of your Christian life, okay? I'm going to be teaching about this on March 2nd at 801 North Mesa in the Methodist building is um, Mesa and Yandel beginning March 2nd, 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. in English. Attention, if you wanna, if you wanna enjoy this teaching, come and discover this. And I'm gonna tell you just a little bit now, but March 2nd, then March 9th, 16 and 23 of March, I'm gonna be teaching in English a course on the gifts. And you wanna come and see 10.30 a.m. to 11.30 30 a.m. It is on Saturday, Saturdays, only on March. And, and please attend. And you're going to have a choice to, uh, to uh, pick your certificate of continuing education issued by the Oral Roberts University Bible Institute. But I would love for a bunch of you to come and meet me that Saturday. Come and learn the teaching and decide if you want the certificate. But I'm going to be teaching. This is a powerful course that is good for pastors and teachers and ministers and leaders and volunteers in churches. You will grow so much. And I want you to not miss it. Now, listen, we're about to go into prayer for your miracle. Make sure that you call the number on your screen. And remember that Saturday, March 2nd, beginning at 10 a.m., 801 North Mesa. And that is the Methodist Church of North Mesa and Yandel. Right there in the chapel, I'm going to be teaching this course. But let me just give you a, a little introduction to that. People don't understand that Aside from the nine manifestations of the Spirit, and please keep calling, 915-532-8518. Keep calling, call, 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 because the power of the Holy Spirit is here to minister to you. Aside from the nine manifestations of 1 Corinthians 12, 7 and on, the Father gives you gifts for your normal life. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to teach on this at the course but you have to realize that you have between five and 30, not nine. The, the nine manifestations that Paul mentions in verse 7, 1 Corinthians 12, have to do with the, what happens in the church when you, you're, you're coming together in the church, right? 1 Corinthians 14, 1 says that you have to bubble bubble in the gifts. You come in and there is healing and, and anointing and people are worshiping and Jesus is coming in with his presence and there is prophecy. That is 1 Corinthians 12, 7. But when you go back to uh, verse 6, the activities, the energematon of the Father have to do with what you do outside the church. And you, you have between 5 and 30 uh, um, of these gifts. So God has empowered you not just to build the church. The Father gives you the gifts for your life. Why? Because when you're empowered that way and you are out there at the place where you work, God can move through you and he can use you and people are going to want to know him through you. Most people believe that the, the natural life is secular life. Where well, Pastor Orlando, if you have a job, that's a secular job. There is no such thing as secular in the Bible. Everything is sacred. It's either pagan or sacred. God is not a secular God. Um, your capacity, Deuteronomy 18 says, to make money. It says, I am giving you the power to get well. That is a gift from the Father. You have to discover the rest. It has to do with wisdom. Then the Son gives you ministries to operate in the church. These are positions. How many positions? At least 16. One six <laughs> that you have to minister in the church aside from the nine manifestations of the Spirit. And then you have the graces of the Holy Spirit, the charismaton that you need to discover. 
If you want to know more, just join me at the next class with the Oral Roberts University Bible Institute coming up March the 2nd. And by the way, listen, my wife and I are launching a Hispanic-only, Hispanic-only church, and we meet on Sundays at 2 p.m. right there where we're going to be teaching the course, 801 North Mesa. If you are Spanish-speaking or if you are bilingual and you don't have a church that you call home, where you are being used by God to build it. I need those 16 positions right now because you cannot build a church by yourself. It has to be a work of the Trinity and people who are in power. Imagine the church that discovers that they have 16 positions that the Lord has given people to occupy in the churches. We're going to be, we're going to have El Paso in a revival. By the way, I'm calling El Paso the city of the Holy Spirit because my message is the message of the Holy Spirit. Unless we go back on our knees and we call the Holy Spirit to move in our lives, we're done. We're done. He has his power. The Bible says it is not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Listen, just a moment. I want to pray for you. But if you need a church, if you're not attending a church, you're not growing in, in, a, in a church, when you're not learning and you're not discovering who you are, come and meet with us. If you are bilingual, Spanish speaking only, or if you are uh, English and Spanish speaking, come and meet us this Sunday at 2 p.m. at 801 North Mesa. And for those of you who only speak English, join me at the Bible course coming up March the 2nd at 10 a.m. at 801 North Mesa. And also, listen, I'm opening a Bible study only on Sundays at 1. If you want to come in this Sunday, we can meet, and I'm going to teach you the scriptures at 1. Our service starts at 2, and you're welcome to stay. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those who need healing right now, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we call on you to uh, respond and answer the prayers of your people. In Jesus' mighty name, release the gifts of healing. In Jesus' name. Father, I pray for that gentleman that needs a job. Lord, open the door. Give him wisdom and clarity. The Bible declares that there is word of wisdom available to your children. 1 Corinthians 12, 7. In Jesus' name, I pray for the word of wisdom. Father, for the word of knowledge, for the discernment of spirit to be imparted in your people. In Jesus' name, return us to prayer, Father God. Return us to repentance. Return us back to the word. In Jesus' name, I pray that you are healed in the name of Jesus. I declare Isaiah 53 that says, by your strength stripes we are healed in Jesus name I pray Matthew the gospel it says that he carry in his own body all of our diseases listen I feel that the Holy Spirit is giving me a word for somebody who needs to touch Christ I cannot heal you I don't have any power but the one that is in me he's releasing the gifts of healing in your life right now if you touch Jesus just reach out your hands towards the TV set as a point of contact I declare healing in your body in the name of Jesus. Headache, go in the name of Jesus. Uh, problems with arthritis. I hear arthritis in the spirit. In Jesus' name, somebody, you just need to bend down and open, bend down, and the pain is gone. Make sure that you call and testify and let us know that the Lord did touch your life. In Jesus' name. Um, somebody, somebody also has an issue. You have somebody who is in jail. You, you got to make sure that that person is listening to the gospel so that they come to Christ. But it's a woman. You're very hurt right now with the situation. If somebody is in jail. In Jesus' name, Father, we leave that person in that location in jail that your spirit touches him. It's a gentleman. You're the mother. You're the mother. And you are very, very uh, worried today. Today, because lots of people have relatives in jail, but it's, I'm speaking to a woman. I want you to call the channel and let them know we spoke to you. In Jesus' name, I pray for comfort and peace in your life. And what I feel the Holy Spirit saying is you, you need to release him. Because if you don't, you get too stressed and you get sick, and then he has not, nobody to pray for him as you can. You're the mother. And God has something very special. He listens to mothers praying and interceding for their children. Listen, the Bible promises there are children 
if we are righteous in Christ, the Bible promises that our children will be saved. So stand on that promise in Jesus' name as you pray for your son, but release him to the Lord. Release him to the Lord and let him take charge in the name of Jesus. Remember, this is United with Christ. Do not go away because it's a very special program in Spanish coming up. You're going to feel the anointing. The power of God is coming into your life. Don't forget to continue to call even after I leave. Just call and call and call, and they're going to be praying for you. Very special program. Do not go. And remember, this is Pastor Orlando. My wife and I will welcome you. If you don't have a church that you call home, visit with us, 801 North Mesa, in Spanish only, 2 p.m., on Sundays, if you're bilingual, you're welcome to come. And don't forget to join me for the Bible Institute from Oral Roberts University. That begins Saturday, March the 2nd, 9, 16, and the 23rd, 10, 30 a.m., uh, 10 a.m. to 1.30. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Remember, read 1 Corinthians chapter 12. There are manifestations of the Spirit. There are activities of the Father. There are gifts from the Son. I cannot believe people don't understand this. You have three dimensions in your life. Gifts for your life, gifts to build the church, and gifts that will bring the power of God into you. So, remember, God loves you very much. Jesus died for you. Just a few more seconds. Somebody, you are listening. You're a gentleman. The Lord is giving you one opportunity to be saved. Your life is in danger. Right there where you are, just say, Lord, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I receive you. Wash me from my sins and write my name in the book of life. You better do it. Uh, it's a gentleman. You better do it now in Jesus' name. See you next time. Bye-bye.